Recently, I was at a car boot sale and it was coming towards the end of the day. Everyone was kind of packing away their stuff. And I saw this sorry looking coffee table with a broken leg leaning up against somebody's car who was packing their stuff away. And I went to have a closer look and she said, just take it. So I did. So this is the tabletop and there are plenty of marks and scratches on this. There's also quite a large heat mark here. Looks like somebody's left a hot plate on this table for too long. The wood generally looks really dry in places and there's a lot of wear and tear on the sides too. And on the ends of the tabletop, where you would expect to see some end grain from the wood, it's actually side grain and that's a bit of a giveaway. It tells me that this tabletop isn't solid wood. It's probably either plywood or chipboard inside and it has this edge banding veneer applied to the sides. And on the underside of the table, one of these leg mounts has obviously had a bit of a dodgy repair job at one point with some glue. And when I found the table, this was where the broken leg was, so this repair obviously didn't do too well. Over here we have the four solid wood legs, and they have a thread in them which is meant to screw into these leg mounts and one or two of them still work but I really don't rate that style of construction it's all a bit too Ikea. Whenever I've done a restoration video before on an item of furniture that isn't solid wood I've had a lot of negative comments from people saying why bother spending time on it and I can kind of see where they're coming from I know in terms of monetary value this thing isn't going to be worth a lot of money but there's a few reasons why I like doing this sort of project and none of them are profit. Firstly, I really like the look of mid-century modern furniture regardless of whether it's fashionable or not. Secondly, I really like the idea of saving something from being thrown away and giving it a new lease of life. And thirdly, I just find it quite satisfying to take something that looks old and nasty and make it look good again. And also this type of project really isn't all that time consuming. You can spend a few hours on something like this and make it look really good, so why not? I'm going to work on the tabletop first and I'm going to start by unscrewing these leg mounts. Now the screws are out, I can tell that this mount seems to be glued on there, so I'm going to hit it with a mallet and try and remove it. With the leg mount removed, I can see from this tear out here that underneath the grain is running this way when the top veneer is running this way. So that tells me that this tabletop is plywood. Plywood is better than chipboard, so that is a win. Next I'm going to give the tabletop a sanding, but I need to be pretty careful here because I don't want to risk sanding through the veneer. I used an 80 grit paper on the random orbit sander to cut through the varnish to bare wood. Okay, that's enough sanding and I haven't sanded through the veneer which is good and I really like the grain on this, it looks like it's been book matched. Next I can sand the edges and I'm just going to do that by hand. I also gave the underside of the tabletop a quick sanding just to clean it up. Next I'm going to use the bandsaw to take off these threaded ends of the legs. Next I need to remove all of the old varnish from these legs. I sanded the legs again with the 80 grit paper first, and then did some hand sanding with 120 grit. Now I need to make some new leg mounts for the underside of this table and I found some wood in my scrap bin that matches the grain on the underside of the table pretty well. I think this might be beech, and I'm going to start by gluing these two pieces together. After about three hours, I used a card scraper to scrape off any dried up glue and then used a hand plane to clean up the faces. Then I cut one of the ends of the workpiece square on the mitre saw. I set up a stop block at 10 centimeters from the blade and cut four new leg mounts. And these blocks were a bit thicker than I wanted them to be so I ripped them down by about 10mm at the table saw. 
Then I used a large washer to mark up some roundovers for the corners of the blocks and shaped them on the disc sander. These legs need to be fixed to the bottom of the table with a slight angle, something like that. So next I need to create some sort of jig that will allow me to get both the angle and the position of each leg consistent with the others. I've got a wedge of wood here and I'm just going to offer the leg up to that and see if that angle looks good. That looks okay but I think it could do with being a little bit more angled so I'm going to reshape this on the belt sander. And that angle looks okay to me. I cut the wedge down to size on the bandsaw. So for the jig I'm going to use a scrap piece of plywood and I'm going to fix the wedge to that roughly in the centre. And then I'm going to place one of the leg mounts onto the wedge and create some walls around it. And then I just need another wall at the back. And that's the jig complete. Next I need to find the centre of the leg mounts. And I know that these are 10 centimetres in length, so I can just mark up 5 centimetres. And I can use this centre joint in the wood to get the centre that way. The top of these legs measure about 35 and a half millimetres. And I think I have a 35 millimetre Forstner bit. Now I can just centre the Forstner bit on the centre point that I've marked up on the leg mounts and I'll clamp down the jig to the drill press table. Okay, I think I'm ready to drill. I'm going to mark up a centre point where these old leg mounts were mounted and that will help me to align the new leg mounts. I'm going to mark up some arrows onto these to tell me which way the legs will be angled and also which way up the leg mounts will go. So the legs almost fit inside but it's very tight so going to need to take off a bit more material from the top of the legs. The ideal tool for this would have been a lathe, but I don't have one of those, so I used the belt sander and just tried to keep the workpiece moving. And now I've managed to get all of the legs to fit snugly within the leg mounts. I applied some wood glue and pushed the legs into the new mounts. I made sure they were properly seated with a mallet. So I managed to get all of the legs in by roughly the same amount, but I do expect to have to do some levelling at the bottom of the legs to get the table sitting flush. Next I could trim off the excess of the leg that was protruding through the leg mount. I used the bandsaw for this, and then I sanded on the belt sander to make sure that the top of the leg mounts were flat. Just to add a little bit of extra strength, I'm going to add a screw through the side. I deliberately drilled the pilot holes for the screws to be quite tight, as I wanted a really solid fixing. I used drywall screws for this, and I waxed the thread of the screws with some Brie Wax to help them in. Then I applied wood glue to the top of the leg mounts. And I can just line up the centre joint on the mounting block with the mark I've made on both sides and that will help me to ensure that all of the legs are consistently placed. I used brad nails to secure the blocks temporarily and then I drilled pilot holes and added screws. Then I could test how uneven the legs were. 
I use my electric belt file to level the legs. And I also used it to round over the ends of the legs. So that's all of the wobble taken out of the legs. And now I'm just going to give this a final light sanding by hand and then I can finish it. I used 120 grit for the final sanding. I wiped off any sawdust with a cloth. And for the first coat of finish, I chose teak oil. Once the oil had dried, it looked really nice. To give the table a more hard wearing finish, I applied three coats of this spray varnish. Once each coat had dried, I lightly wet sanded with a 400 grit wet and dry paper before applying the next coat. I think the table looks great and I really enjoyed this project. It took around four hours of my time to complete. I posted some photos of the finished table on Facebook and on the same day somebody got in touch asking to buy it. So this one will be going to its new home next week.